We recently spent the day with Kent Fire and Rescue to take a look at the fabrics and materials used in modern day tents and how they react to fire. Now a lot of research and development goes into these materials to obviously keep you safe while camping. However, prevention is the best protection. So we went through some likely scenarios to see how both the fire and also tents reacted and behaved. We also picked up on some interesting tips and tricks as well while we are at it. However, please do not try and recreate anything in these videos. These tests were conducted by some highly trained professionals. Never smoke inside your tent. Although you can see the materials used in both the ground sheet and the fly sheet perform brilliantly here by preventing the cigarette from igniting the material, it won't, however, stop the contents from catching a light inside your tent. So always smoke outside and away from your tent. Cooking inside your tent increases the possibility of having open flame close to the tent fabric. But again, the fabric performs brilliantly by preventing the fire from spreading throughout the tent and self-extinguishes once the fire is burnt out. Some interesting issues we discovered when conducting this test were that smaller two to three man tents, if a fire develops within the doorway, there is no other means of escape. Keeping a small pocket knife or other cutting device in the storage pocket of the sleeping area gives you the ability to create another exit by cutting the tent fabric in an emergency. Also, always ensure you cook outside your tent. If you need shelter while cooking, canopies and open shelters are a great solution. Normally open on all sides, this helps prevent the risk of fire. In this test we wanted to see how larger family tents reacted to an internal fire. A normal standard household fire alarm was fitted to the top of the sleeping pod to see whether it would provide an early warning and time to escape. The fire was created by igniting everyday objects which you would find in a family tent such as clothing and cardboard waste. Again, the fabric here performs as it should by preventing the fire from spreading it to the rest of the tent. The fire alarm also performed well. This would provide vital life-saving seconds from not only flames but also harmful smoke and carbon dioxide. Once the fire was extinguished, as you can see, the rest of the tent was hardly affected. Showing that the research done into these tents and materials was well worth the time and the effort. However, it was noted that the fire spread through the grass itself, carrying the fire to other areas of the tent underneath the ground sheet. If you do experience a fire, be sure to thoroughly investigate and extinguish any fire underneath this ground sheet to prevent any other damage. So we learnt a lot with Kent Fire and Rescue about how tents react to fire and also the fabrics and materials used. We also came up with some top tips as well to help keep you safe. The first being, obviously, don't smoke or cook inside your tent. If you are cooking, make sure your cooking equipment's shut off after you've used it or if using a barbecue, make sure it's fully extinguished before leaving it. Prevention is always going to be the best protection. Our second point, either carry a small pocket knife or some other cutting device with you with inside your sleeping area. If a fire does develop within the only exit in the tent, you've always then got that option to create another by cutting open the material. A household fire alarm is a great little bit of kit to take with you. Very small and compact, easy to carry around, and obviously just takes a couple of batteries to power up, but obviously going to provide you with some vital life-saving seconds in the event of a fire. And our final point, always make sure when buying a tent that it has some kind of fire retardancy or protection within it. All our tents here at Simply Hike do, so you can always be ensured you'll be nice and safe when buying a tent with us. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask or obviously contact your local fire brigade. They've always got some great information to help you out.